thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. A couple of videos ago, when I shared my kitchen revealed, I asked if you'd be interested in seeing how I organized it. You were, so in this video I'll open every single drawer and cabinet and show you what it looks like inside. I'll also talk you through why I chose the placement for the items and along the way I'll share tips if you need ideas on how to keep an organized and functional kitchen too. Disclaimer: If you follow me you know I'm a bit of a minimalist. I'm also a single person who doesn't enjoy cooking. What I share throughout this video does still apply even if you have more people in your household, more items and perhaps more storage space. It's not about the number of items, it's the reasoning behind why I store them where I do and how that I'll share today. It's easy for our kitchens to become cluttered with things we don't use, like duplicate utensils and expired food. So, before starting to organize, go through your cabinets and drawers and declutter anything you no longer need. I already did a big declutter before I moved in in November, and another one after I moved in, so now I have what I need and those are the items that now live in my kitchen cabinets and drawers. Make sure that the items you use most often are easily accessible. Place them at eye level or within arm's reach. My upper cabinets are quite tall. The lowest shelf hits me at the chin and the upper shelf I can just reach with my fingertips. This means that I keep my daily most used items on the two lowest shelves and less often used items higher up. The height also means that it's harder to reach things in the back. I like to pull everything in the cabinets towards the front of them. So, for example, where I don't have a full row of one type of thing, I leave that space empty at the back and can easily access what I do have from the very front. And yes, I do like to line things up instead of just shoving things in randomly. That does make for a neat and organized look and it also makes it easy to see where things go. And while I putter around in my kitchen, I usually listen to something which brings me to the sponsor of this video, Blinkist. Blinkist is an app that allows you to understand powerful ideas in 15 minutes. They offer more than 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts that you can learn and grow from. There are so many non-fiction books that I just never have time to fully read. Blinkist allows me to learn about the topic of the book, the most important parts, without reading the whole thing. At the moment I'm working on better health habits and have been intrigued by the fact that so many Japanese live past 100 years. So I listened to the book Ikigai, The Secret to a Long and Happy Life by Hector Garcia and Francis Morales. In the book they explain this Japanese secret to a long and happy life and it's so interesting. I highly recommend to listen to or read this book with Blinkist and maybe you'll be as inspired as I am. Also don't miss Blinkist Spaces. This feature allows you to create a space with friends or family where you can recommend titles to each other. All members of a shared space can access all titles in the space with or without a Blinkist Premium subscription. Right now Blinkist has a special offer just for my viewers. Get a 7 day free trial and 25% off Blinkist annual premium by using my promo link in the description box. Moving on. Store items that you use frequently within easy reach. Items that you use less often can be stored in harder to reach areas. In my kitchen that means that I keep all the cat related items in a drawer that's easy to get into. I used to keep that stuff in a bottom drawer but let me tell you the difference it has made moving that drawer up a notch. I reach in there several times a day to refill food or give bonuses medication and the fact that I now don't have to bend over every time is a game changer. As for items that can go in harder to reach spots, I have this little cabinet above the fridge. I don't keep much up there, but the items that do live there are my toaster, my food processor and my big mocha pot, which are items I rarely need. There are a few things to consider before you start organizing your kitchen. The first one is, what is the best placement for the different categories of items? I don't have a huge amount of cabinets and there's not a separate pantry here. When I looked at the layout, I planned out where the main categories of items would go before starting to put them away. I knew I wanted to keep my dishes, glasses and cups above the dishwasher so it would be easy to empty it. I also made sure that my cabinet doors would open so I wouldn't have to work around an open door when filling the cabinet with dishes. The 
pantry items I would have preferred to keep over the sink because I like to be able to just wipe the shelves and let the crumbs fall straight into the sink. That wasn't possible here, but maybe it's an option in your kitchen. Here that cabinet ended up above the area next to the sink, which is the second best, because that's where the food is prepped anyway. I knew I wanted to keep the spices above the stove for easy access when I do occasionally cook. Also, the cabinet above the stove is mostly taken up by the exhaust fan, and I had to work around that. Spices are small and my bins for them fit next to the exhaust pipe. I also keep bins there for medicines, extra glass jars and a few baking tools. I know quite a few of you missed it in the kitchen reveal video, but this cabinet houses the microwave. It takes up quite a large part of the cabinet and above I place the items that I don't reach for daily like vases, candle holders, etc. After you've decided the placement of the main categories, you can create subcategories. For example, store all your baking supplies together in one spot and your snacks in another. Grouping similar items together makes it easier to find what you need. Another tip is to label. Labeling your bins and containers help you find what you need quickly and it also helps you put things back in their proper place. You can use a label maker or write on sticky labels. I use this label maker and prefer the clear labels with black print in the smallest font size. I don't label everything, only the necessary. Since I'm the only one living here, I know where I keep my snacks and my spices. I do label the actual spice containers though, and some of my other individual storage containers where I can't see what's in them. If you can tell coffee apart from rolled oats, but wouldn't be able to tell corn flour from potato starch, if that makes sense, label those. I do have a label on one of the bins, and that's the one with the gluten-free snacks, so my son can easily see what he can eat when he's here, even if I'm not. Make the most of your available storage space. When I moved in, this was basically the layout of the original kitchen. I did switch out some of the upper cabinets to maximize the space, but what made the biggest difference was that I added several hidden doors to the base units. That means that what looks like one drawer from the front is sometimes actually two. I can now better utilize the whole space without stacking things on top of each other. There's now a dedicated place for everything. I did also buy extra shelves for the upper cabinets, so where two shelves are usually included, I got an extra one for each cabinet. I can use them interchangeably, so in one cabinet it made sense to have four shelves, and in another one, just three. You can also use organizers such as drawer dividers, shelf risers, and other cabinet organizers to maximize the space. Drawer dividers keep utensils, knives, and other kitchen tools organized and easily accessible. Shelf risers give you an extra shelf where there isn't one. I don't use shelf risers in this kitchen, but when I had a kitchen where I couldn't move the shelves that were spaced wide apart, they were super useful. I do love drawer dividers and use lots of them in this kitchen. In a couple of drawers I have the cutlery dividers that are great for cutlery, but also for other small kitchen tools. Alongside those dividers, I have ones that are bigger and divide drawers into three parts. I also love them for getting what would otherwise be a junk drawer organized. I also use storage bins that I've had from before to divide drawers. I like these milky ones for wet items, so if something spills, I can easily wipe them down. 
I line most of my drawers. Felt keeps things from rattling around. Rubber keeps things from sliding and is also easy to keep clean. I keep the trash and recycling in the bottom drawer under the sink. There's one bin for paper, one for plastic, one for compost and one for trash. I also keep a couple of smaller bins for recycling in another drawer. In here I put metal recycling. In this one I put the items that need special attention, like electronics and batteries. Aside from the practical and functional considerations, the aesthetics are important to me. While I don't cook much, the kitchen is a big space in my not-so-big apartment. It's where I also work at my desk and use the open floor space for filming. I also work out in here, so it's really important to me that it feels calm and uncluttered. I prefer to not keep a lot out on the countertop. I do have my carbonator out, but that's mostly because it's so tall and doesn't really fit in a cabinet. I also keep a water bottle out that I try to remember to drink from throughout the day. Next to it I keep a container with open cat food pouches because I reach for them frequently. There's also a roll of paper towels. I rarely use them, but when there is a spill slash accident that I don't want to use a cloth towel for, I do want the roll to be easy to grab. I do have a pet after all. Basically, I try to make the kitchen portion of this big space to feel less like a kitchen and more like a room. As for inside the cabinets, I do enjoy when bins are the same or similar throughout. And I like to decant dry goods into unified containers. It's just so pleasing when I open the cabinets. I've had my bins and containers for many years and they've moved with me several times, so this wasn't a one-time purchase. I started collecting them a long time ago and then added to them as I needed. I hope these tips and examples are useful and inspiring to you. By considering the factors I've mentioned, you too can create an organized and functional kitchen that suits your needs and lifestyle. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, I really appreciate the support. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm excited to share more from my new apartment here in Stockholm in future videos. If you're looking for sources, there is a link in the description box that takes you to my website where I'm collecting them for you. And again, thanks Blinkist for sponsoring. Check the link below to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hej då!